Welcome to Wishaw Old Parish Church, whether you're here with us in person today or you're watching later online. Obviously, it's a, a day of, of sadness, but also a day of hopefulness. And as I was driving in in the car today, it is 9-11 as well. So we can think back to events that have shaped history both today and in the past. Let's just prepare ourselves for our worship this morning. God calls us to worship through the words of Isaiah. The Lord says to his people, when the time comes to save you, I will show you favor and answer your cries for help. I will guard you and protect you, and through you make a covenant with all peoples. Let's join in worshiping God this morning as we sing hymn 510, verses 1 to 3, Jesus Calls Us. Today we are gathering as people are all over Scotland to, to pay tribute, to join in remembrance and to join in memory. Our General Assembly moderator has, has, has written a, a prayer that is being played th throughout the length and breadth of Scotland. Our opening prayer this morning is his prayer. Let's join in that prayer. 
Almighty and everlasting God, in you there is neither beginning nor end. You are from everlasting to everlasting, ever good and ever true. You are our hope in life and in death, and in your word of promise we place our trust. Today we give you thanks for the life of your servant, our Queen Elizabeth, whom now you have taken to be with you. Long has she reigned over us, offering support and courage, a steadying hand in difficult days, and a kindly presence in times of peace and prosperity. We praise you for her life, so rich in years and in service, for our unwavering commitment to country, commonwealth, and every generation, and for our trust in Jesus Christ, her devotion to the church, and her respect for other faiths. Receive our thanks today. May she rest in peace and let light shine upon her. In their loss, comfort her family, especially our King, as he assumes his new responsibilities. Assure them of your unending love. Grant them the consolation of cherished memories and the hope of your promised kingdom. These prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The wonders of modern technology. And isn't it great that we're able to share what Dr. Greenshield said, which is being shared throughout the churches throughout Scotland. It's wonderful bringing us together in that unifying act of prayer. Now today is a, a kind of sad day, so I thought we can't really have any, we can't have any quizzes, can't have any things that we play around, we can't. So I thought, why don't we look at how we feel today? And Jesus gives us a wonderful, wonderful story. And I'm going to share that story with you. And at bits of the story, I'm going to invite you to listen to the story. And then I'm going to say very quickly, how do you feel? So you can tell me how you feel. Are you feeling bored? No. Uh, Are you feeling happy? Oh, maybe. Are you feeling sad? Maybe. Or how do the people in the story feel? So listen to the story now. And... It's a story, appropriately, about death. Jesus had a friend called Lazarus. Lazarus lived in a a town called Bethany. And Lazarus was very, very ill. It was the town where Jesus' other friends, Mary and Martha, also lived. They sent a message to Jesus. Lord, your dear friend is ill. How would you feel when your dear friend would be ill? Yes, Matthew. Sad. You'd feel sad. You'd feel sad, yeah. Anything else? Yes. Upset. Upset. Worried, as it. Worried and concerned. So that's how Jesus must have felt. The story goes on. Jesus said... Don't worry, this illness will not lead to the death of Lazarus. Jesus loved Mary and Martha and her sister. And when they received the news that Lazarus was ill, it was still two days until Jesus could arrive. When they arrived, they looked at Lazarus. And they said, look at him. He's asleep. Will we wake him? Jesus said no, because he didn't think that Lazarus was dead. So how would you feel if somebody thought you were dead? Yes, children? Disappointed. Oh, would you be disappointed? You might think it was quite amusing, wouldn't you? You would be, are you sure you're not? You would 
No, then wouldn't you? You would prod them. Hey, is he alive? Is he alive? It would be a strange feeling, wouldn't it? Because some people would think they were dead and some people would, what's happened? Let's find out what happens. Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. But for your sake, I'm glad that he did not suffer. Oh, let's go, said Thomas. Let's be with him. So how would you feel if somebody wasn't suffering? You would feel it was okay. Yeah, it's good. You don't want anyone to suffer. I, th- I think that's the, 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 the kind of best feeling. But Mary and Martha, remember, they're part of the story. And Lazarus, I, didn't, I forgot to tell you this, but he was their brother. Lord, said Martha, our brother would not have died if you had been here. How do you think Martha felt? Yes, that's right. Some people, when they face death, feel very, very angry and very grieved. And that's, that's perfectly natural. Would you get angry with Jesus? Yeah, people get angry with Jesus. Yeah, they get angry with Jesus all the time. But Jesus replied this way. He will raise to life on the last day. For I am the resurrection and the life, said Jesus. He who believes in me will live, even though they die And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? How do you feel somebody puts that? Do you believe this? Is that fair? Is it not fair? Or is it fair? That's a really difficult question, isn't it? Some things in life are very, very tough to understand. So Jesus went with Mary and Martha and in private. And Mary and Martha were weeping. How do you think Mary and Martha felt that their brother had died? Terrible. Terrible, yes. Upset and angry and shocked, yes. We all all feel that when, when somebody dies, don't we? Jesus saw her weeping. He saw how people were. And this is what the Bible says to us. His heart was touched, and he was deeply moved. So how do we feel when we see someone who is sad? How do you feel? Yeah, you feel sad as well. The better, yes. You want to give them a hug, don't you? How, how, How do you feel? No? Confused. Aha, confused. The story nears its end. Come and see, Lord, they said. And then Jesus wept. See how much he loved them, the people said. Could he not have kept Lazarus from dying? And so Lazarus was taken to his tomb. And a stone placed at the entrance. Jesus arrived at the tomb. And said, take that stone away. Did I not tell you that you would see God's glory if you believed? I thank you. And he began to pray to God. And this is what he said. I thank you, Father, that you listened to me. I know you always listen to me. But I say for the sake of the people, so that they will believe that you sent me. When we're sad, when we're angry, when we need comforted, when we need to know that God is with us, we pray. We tell God how we feel. We express to God in the words what's in our hearts. But the end of the story isn't a sad story. Do you know the end of the story? Have you heard this story before? Yes, that's right. It's the only person apart from Jesus that came out, and here's the end of the story. And after he said this, he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out, and his hands and his feet in the grave clothes, and the cloth round his face, untie him, said Jesus, 
and let him go. Because Lazarus was made alive. And we believe that as Christians, even though we die and we're sad, we seek comfort and we grieve, and sometimes we're angry and sometimes we're confused and sometimes we don't really know how to feel. We know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life and that we will be alive. Let's sing now. O Lord, all the world belongs to you. It's a lovely song to just make us feel just that wee bit better on a day of sadness. Today we're not going to have a, a sermon as such. We're going to have three short reflections and I've chosen three scripture passages that I hope you'll agree with me. They come out, sum up as we look at Her Majesty's faith, not really her life because it's not really uh, a service to, to do justice to somebody's life, but it's a, a service in which we do justice and we reflect on what a faithful person she has been to her Lord and her country. I'd like to invite Isabel now to read the first of our, our three passages. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 1 to 9. In those days, when the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under the direction of Eli, there were very few messages from the Lord and visions from him were quite rare. One night, Eli, 
who was now almost blind, was sleeping in his own room. Samuel was sleeping in the sanctuary where the sacred covenant box was. Before dawn, while the lamp was still burning, the Lord called Samuel. He answered, Yes, sir, and ran to Eli and said, You called me, and here I am. But Eli answered, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed. The Lord called Samuel again. The boy did not know that it was the Lord, because the Lord had never spoken to him before. So he got up, went to Eli, and said, You called me, and here I am. But Eli answered, My son, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. The Lord called Samuel a third time. He got up, went to Eli, and said, You called me, and here I am. Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to him, Go back to bed, and if he calls you again, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. First reflection this morning is entitled A Divine Calling. I have a very, very, very good voice that does not even need a microphone. I used to practice in a church just like this, bouncing my voice off the wall. I'm sure I've used this as a sermon example a number of times, but uh, I've gone to hospital to, to visit a person who's seriously ill, and the medical staff have, have turned to me and, uh, and they've said, no, this person hasn't woken for some time. And so maybe I haven't shouted at them, but with these deep, low to tones, I've gone, Jimmy, how are you? And, I have literally woken people up. I'm not saying I've woken them from the dead. That would be a bit silly to say. But they've woken up and I get the smile and I get the squeeze of the hand. In this passage from Samuel, we hear the call of God inside Samuel's head. He thinks it's the, the old man Eli calling him. And as Isabel read to us, Three times he goes to, to the old man thinking that it was him. So how are we to connect this very famous calling of Samuel? It's a, a passage you'll have heard probably throughout your, your whole life. Well, Samuel had a, a ceremonial role. He was, he was learning. He was learning how to become a priest. He was almost a kind of, a kind of trainee priest, if you like. And often these, these young boys would come from a, a priestly family. His primary function was, of course, learning. He would be learning the Torah, learning the Word of God, learning about visions, about dreams, about interpreting religious experiences. Our Queen undoubtedly had a sense of, of calling. I believe that she saw her calling in a very religious way. If you listen to, to many of the, the, the speeches that she made at Christmas time, it just, it just came through. She saw what she did as our monarch as something that was divine, something that came from God. Yes, it was her birthright, it was her upbringing, just like the young Samuel. She was trained, trained to perform her duties as monarch. And she inherited that, as we know from her beloved father. There's a few here who do remember the late King George. And we know from accounts that others have told just what an influence her father was upon her. In her reign, which started when she was a young woman, she took the advice of the elders 
and she learned. And as we've heard on our TVs and radios, she became that wise person. She became that person to, to offer advice to others looking for good leadership. Now, in previous eras and centuries, the monarch believed that they came to the throne by the divine right of kings. And history has shown how, how that title, that doctrine, was, was abused by some of the monarchs. But for our monarch, there was no abuse. For our monarch, it brought a sense of purpose and destiny. Our passage goes on to show that it was, it was Eli. Eli was a very, very flawed man. I won't go into that in this short address. But it was Eli who, who realized that it was God that was calling Samuel. The young Samuel would go on to become the leader of his nation. The young Samuel would go on to be that person who was looked up to. The Sermon of the Call is such a familiar one to us in church. The call can be that loud voice. The call can be inside your head. The call can be identified by another, like Eli for Samuel. To respond to that call and make it part of you. And as we reflect upon the faith life of Queen Elizabeth, our, our sovereign, she lived her life as a Christian. She lived her faith in public. She brought her, her duties, the Spirit of God, and the ways of Christ. She spoke of this many times. So let's each one of us today, as we reflect upon her faith at this service, to listen to the, the voice of the Lord, whether it's loud, whether it's soft, or whether it's through others and respond in living our lives in a Christian way, just as she did. Let's join in singing that wonderful old psalm, I to the hills will lift mine eyes. Let's hear now Isabel read our second reading today, which is from the New Testament from the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, 22 to 26. 
What I say is this, let the Spirit direct your lives and you will not satisfy the, des the desires of the human nature. For what our human nature wants is opposed to what the Spirit wants. And what the Spirit wants is opposed to what our human nature wants. These two are enemies, and this means that you cannot do what you want to do. If the Spirit leads you, then you are not subject to the law. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as these. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have put to death their human nature with all its passions and desires. The Spirit has given us life. He must also control our lives. We must not be proud or irritate one another or be jealous of one another. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reflection today is entitled, In Celebration and in Joy. I to the hills will lift mine eyes, from whence doth come mine aid. My safety cometh from the Lord, who heaven and earth hath made. We have just sung that wonderful ancient psalm. When I began my own ministry nearly 40 years ago, I used to use this, this hymn, this reflection, as part of my funeral address. For it speaks of the, the Spirit of the Lord and the ways of Christ, being with us in a time of struggle, loss, and hardship. It's about a, a, a young shepherd. And a young shepherd is looking up to the hills. He's looking at the solidity of the hills. He's looking at how the, the mountains are there forever. They don't change from one day, one month, one year to the next. They are never ending. And he's crying out, from whence doth come my need? Who will aid me in my grief? From times past and for all of us, we seek a sense of peace in a time of trouble. We look for divine answers to earthly questions. And sometimes the answers of peace don't come and people feel abandoned. So how do we guard against that? Our passage from Galatians chapter 5 is probably the, the seminal passage about the Spirit of God. How do we, do we know what the Spirit of God is? It's about the qualities of our personality and our human nature that we should aspire to. Now we know that no one is perfect. Our queen wasn't perfect. No one is immune from the tests and the tragedies of life. And famously, in 1992, the Queen said this, 1992 is not a year that I shall look back on with undiluted pleasure. In the words of, more than, more, in the words of one of my more, more sympathetic correspondents, it has, it has hastened out to be an anus horribilis. Why did you think that? Well, if we can think back to 1992, and you can see just part of the little picture there, her favourite house nearly burnt down. Now, we know the Queen had lots of different uh, palaces and lots of different places she stayed, but really, Buckingham Palace is her office, Windsor Castle is her home. And here we saw that picture of the Queen in the morning after as she stood with a, a firefighter and looked about how much of her home had burnt down. 
We don't need to dwell on them, but the inset shows the pictures of her, her children's marriages falling apart. At that time, during the 1990s, the institution of monarchy, which she had so carefully cherished, so carefully brought up from the inheritance of her late father, and yet it was struck by scandal. Questions were being asked about the future of the monarchy. It was not a happy time in her life. Her faith was tested, just as our faith is tested. But she trusted. She trusted in the God who bolsters all of us. Bolstered by the foundations of her faith, given within her by the Spirit. As I've read for us, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. These are the fruits of the Spirit. These are the qualities of God that he wants us to have. So as we think of Her Majesty today, as we reflect upon her life, as churches all up the land are reflecting in remembrance today, these qualities of the Holy Spirit could be her epitaph. What the Spirit produces is love. What the Spirit produces is joy. What the Spirit produces is peace, is patience. It produces kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. What the Spirit produces is humility and self-control. As we reflect upon Elizabeth, our Queen today, surely that is her religious epitaph. Let's sing once again, as we sing an older hymn from, from CH3, who is on the Lord's side.
Our third reading today is from Isaiah, Isaiah 49. Hear now the words of the prophet. The Lord says to his people, the time comes to save you. I will show you favor and answer your cries for help. I will guard you and protect you and through you make a covenant with all peoples. And then in verse 22 he says, The sovereign Lord says to his people, I will signal to the nations, and they will bring your children home. Kings will be like fathers to you. Queens will be like mothers. They will bow low before you and honor you. They will humbly show their respect for you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. No one who waits for my help will be disappointed. Amen. May God bless to us his holy word. The last reflection that I offer this morning is, what does she bequeath? These three verses from this wonderful, wonderful chapter in Isaiah, Isaiah 49, is part of a, a sermon. It was given to a, a group of people who were in exile. They were Jews who were living in Babylon and not in Jerusalem. And the prophet now is called the servant of the Lord. And so he says these words, I will signal to the nation and they will bring their children home. Bring their children home. So the preacher knows that a, a good sermon to relate to people must be personable. It must actually speak about our real lives, and it must somehow get inside their heads. So he calls Israel. He calls the nation. He, he gathers these group of people together. They're in the synagogue. They're in the equivalent of a church. And so he wants to say to them, this is what the Lord your God is saying directly to you. And for the word of God to, to take effect, to speak to us, to give us that hope in these times of struggle, it must somehow transform us. It must somehow change us. And so he starts off by saying, God knows you in the womb. That's not quite kind of radical. That when you're just that tiny embryo in the womb of your mother, I know you. I know who you are. And then he creates the second image. Your name is written on the palm of my hand. That is how close we are to God. When we, we think of our children, think of our grandchildren, we think of children in our lives or people in our lives who are close to us. And I met my next door neighbor today and he was walking with one of his little girls who is, is about six or seven and they were holding hands together. And so it's that image that our name is in the palm of God's hand. And so that's what the preacher is trying to say to us. He must be speaking to us. Was Her Majesty throughout her life speaking to us? At the Platinum Jubilee just months ago, it wasn't really the pomp and ceremony that we remember, is it? In London, they had that wonderful parade of the buses representing every, every year, every decade of her life. And, and then at the concert afterwards, there was various old pop singers warbling and trying not to fall off the stage. And then there was a magnificent light show. That light show was spectacular, but can you really remember it? What do you remember? It's that bit, isn't it? It's the Queen taking a marmalade sandwich out of her handbag. It would be an anecdote that anyone would tell at a, a funeral service, isn't it? But, it? but do you remember the last bit of that little sketch was the Queen tapping on a, a saucer. The Queen lyrics 
The pop group Queen, go back and look at it. She's tapping out that we will rock you bit. She was, she was having a laugh. And at any funeral service, what we would say about someone is about their sense of humour, isn't it? She was a lady who had a twinkle in the eye. Now, many, many of our, of our younger people, they won't really remember her as we, more mature people, do remember her. She somehow become the grandmother of the nation. And if you go on YouTube, you can see that lovely little clip where she's with her great-grandson. And he's no behaving very well. He's bored. He's about, I don't know, three or four, whatever he is. He's yawning away. And she nudges him and goes, look at the red arrows in the sky. And he, you see the little boy's face going... How many hundreds of thousands, and there's, I think, some people here who have shaken hands with the Queen? How many millions of people have lined streets and tell their neighbour, I saw the Queen today. I did that as a 20-year-old student. We all stopped our lessons and we all went down to outside the Caird Hall in Dundee and we're all jostling there to get that little look of the Queen. That's how we will really remember Her Majesty. The prophet knew to speak to people. Before you were in the womb, God knows you. God has written your name on the palm of his hand. And then he tells this kind of anecdote. It's a great poem Chapter 49, and again, I'm just speaking about it for very few minutes. Go away and read it. It is a poem of salvation. And he knew the value of mentioning the monarchy, mentioning the celebrity. And let me read it out of the, the King James Version, because it's, it's slightly different from the Good News Version. And the king shall be thy nursing fathers, and the queens thy nursing mothers. And they shall bow down with thee with their face towards the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord and they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Nursing fathers and nursing mothers. The sermon, the, the poem of salvation, is about God carrying his people from birth, from before the, the womb, into old age. And the central message of this, of this poem is that you will have salvation throughout your life. And he uses this metaphor of the nursing kings and nursing queens. Isn't that such a modern concept? the nursing kings and the nursing queens. And the religious message of the next bit is if you see the kings and the queens showing humility. And the authorised version doesn't mess with its words. It says, and lick up the dust of thy feet. In other words, those who are in power, those who are mighty, those who are given the value and the status they will show humility before God. And then you will know that I am the Lord and that I will provide for all of your needs. Her Majesty carried these words of Isaiah with her in life and in death. We're not sure, but it's kind of leaked out that these were her favorite words of Scripture. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. From Galatians 5, verse 25. The, God of, the call of God will always be there, whether it's that loud minister or whether it's that soft voice inside our head. The help of God, like the hills and the mountains, will always be constant. The qualities of the Holy Spirit that the human self should aspire to. 
and the legacy bequeathed to us of the salvation of God. As our majesty believed, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let's hear now a musical reflection and reflect upon our life. Let's invite Tom now to lead us in our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us share these few moments in prayer. Good Shepherd, we come to you for guidance in our prayers. We remember the carnage of the attack in the Twin Towers in New York and pray for those whose loved ones were lost and others whose lives have been shattered by violence. Prince of Peace, we pray for that continuing conflict in Ukraine will end and all men will strive to bring a peace that passes all understanding to your suffering children in all war-torn lands. We pray for the body of your church, Lord Jesus, where we have become lost, find us. Where we are stubborn, challenge us. Where we have stumbled, restore us. Especially this morning, we pray for this church and those in its fellowship. We pray for all gathered here. May they all find blessing in this worship. We pray for those absent through illness, May they soon be restored to fell health. We pray for those absent who have lost their faith or just cannot bring themselves to return after a long absence through the pandemic restrictions. So for them, be an encouragement and a spur. God of all the world, before whom the leaders of the nations will stand in silence, we pray for the governments of our land for the new Prime Minister and her new Ministers. Give wisdom, compassion to all who lead, that the ways of our lives follow the ways of your Kingdom. These things, together with the unspoken words of our hearts and minds, we offer in the name of our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. Now our shall be received. Thank you. ask for God's blessing upon these gifts. Lord God, we adore thee. Come to worship and lay our lives before thee, giving thanks and praise for our life and faith in Jesus. Let us love thee and our neighbour, and by hearing thy word, grow in faith as we offer ourselves unto thee. We offer these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen.
Good morning, friends, and welcome to our service. Whether you're here in person, watching online, or listening on the telephone later today, uh, I do hope that we all have experienced a blessing from this shared fellowship, even at a distance. Our thanks today to Keith for leading our worship, to Isabel for her reading, to May for the preparation of the PowerPoint and the technical team over in the corner for recording and later transmission of the service. And as always to May for leading our worship at the organ. We are in the process of preparing a newsletter. Uh, this will give fuller details of the presbytery planning process and the, 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 the thoughts and views of the Kirk session following our meeting last week, together with other church news. Should anybody have any stories, anecdotes, comments, or items that they'd wish to share with the congregation, please pass them to me by Thursday, Thursday of this week. It can either be emailed to the church office or to my personal address or written out and handed to me at any time. The, just to amplify a couple of intimations that are printed in the order, the Sacrament of Communion will be celebrated here on Sunday the 2nd of October at 11 a.m. And the following week, our Harvest Fester will be, be, be held. Uh, and as usual in these circumstances, in the run-up to Communion and Harvest, we would seek donations of non-perishable foodstuffs and toiletries for donation to the food bank. And again, on the back of a very successful project last year, the Rotary Club of Mullow and Wishaw is again running their warm-up project to provide good quality winter coats and anoraks for people in need over the winter. Uh, we should have a collection box in the next couple of weeks, but just fair warning, that will be placed at the rear of the church. Uh, and if you have any donations that you feel suitable, please bring them along. In response to the period of national mourning, which commenced yesterday, it has been suggested that the church is opened each day for a short period, say from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Uh, this would give the public, the passing, the folks in the streets, and anybody, even visitors to the town, the opportunity to find a quiet place of solace, far from the bustle of normal day life, to remember in their own way the life and work and witness of our Queen. Obviously, such a thing needs volunteers, so if anybody is willing to share a couple of hours each day on duty, could you please contact me at the close of the service. And as always, remember, stay, star, stay, stay safe, stay calm, stay praying, and God bless you all. Thank you, Tom, and thank you all again. Our sincere thanks to all who have helped in our service today. We close with the hymn 462, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.
God be with us now and every day. And we ask for the blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.